Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of Quran and Science. This is your host, Tamer Mumtaz, welcoming our dear professor, Dr. Zaghloul al Naggar, head of committee on scientific facts in the glorious Quran Supreme Council on Islamic Affairs, and our dear friends, Fuad and Mustafa. The topic of today's episode is Obscuring the Sign of the Night. But first, before we go to this topic, Professor, we'll listen to a recitation of the ayah of the verse dealing with this topic from Surah Al-Isra, verse number 12. <laughs> We made the night and day as two signs. We obliterated the sign of the night, and we made the sign of the day its sight-giving, that you may seek the bounty of your Lord and that you may know the number of years and the reckoning of time. And all things we have explained in detail. Professor Zaghloul, yes. what does obscuring the sign of the night mean? <clears throat> I begin thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator, the creator of the un universe and of everything that's in it, and seeking his blessings and uh, mercy on uh, the seal of prophethood, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah's mercy and blessings be upon him. Um, and uh, I greet you all in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And your viewers as well. And uh, begin by saying that this verse is a unique verse, really. Uh, it struck me um, by the meaning it's carrying and uh, it took me years to try to uh, analyze what's meant by obscuring the sign of the night. Yeah. The verse reads, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, verily, we have made the night and the day two of our signs. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ we have obscured the sign of the night. And made the sign of the day quite obvious. So that you can seek the bounties from your Lord. And so that you can reckon the succession of days and, and, and years. And everything we have detailed beyond any detail. So <clears throat> I start reading what the early uh, Mufassirin um, said about this. Some of them said the sign of the day is the sun and the sign of the night is the moon. But if this is so, 
the moon is still there. What, what does the Quran mean by obscuring the sign of the moon? Some scholars said probably it means the darkness in the moon. The moon is dark and is only lit by reflecting the light of the sun, the, the uh, rays coming from the sun. So the moon has always been dark and it is still dark and nothing has changed. What do we mean by obscuring the sign of the night? Some other scholars said probably the moon was a star in the past, glowing like the sun. And then Allah has caused it to fade out and it became dark. And this may mean uh, obscuring the sign of the night. But scientifically, this cannot be accepted because the smallest size uh, or, or mass, if I say, smallest mass of any heavenly body to react like a sun, like a star, is something within the range of our sun. And the mass of the moon is too, too small uh, to, to be a star. Secondly, if it were a star glowing by energy and uh, nuclear fusion, it would have destroyed the Earth. To have, have, have evaporated the water because it's in very seven close. oceans. It's very close. Uh, the, very close. Yeah. Mm. 380,000 kilometers uh, on the average. This is a very short distance compared to distances in space. So it would have evaporated the water from seas and oceans and rivers and lakes. It would have um, destroyed the atmosphere of the earth completely. Yes. Um, it would allow the air to expand and to escape in outer space. And that's why this suggestion also was difficult to swallow, to accept. Well, it took me years pondering about this verse until I came to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created several spheres of protection for our earth. Uh, we have the atmosphere, uh, the area where we get the uh, changes of the climate, we get clouds, we get rain, um, the atmosphere. And then we have on top of that the ozone layer. And the ozone layer, Allah has created it to be a protective layer for life on the surface of that planet against uh, ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation is very destructive. It can burn forests, it can burn animals, burn plants, it can cause skin cancer. It can destroy the eyesight. But small doses of it, I think. A small doses only can penetrate, but yeah. the, the, the bulk of the beneficial. ultraviolet radiation, we need ultraviolet radiation, yes. but it allows only a very small percentage of it to reach the Earth. But it expels the bulk of it to outer space. Okay. Above that, we have what we call the ionosphere, the ionized layer of the atmosphere. And the ionosphere is a charged zone a zone charged by electric particles. And this zone, first of all, uh, it uh, sends back radio waves. It sends back to us um, uh, telecommunication waves. Uh, Refle so it reflects, you mean? It reflects, yes. Reflects, yes. Uh, reflects. Mm. Uh, so it's a, a, a useful for uh, communication on the surface of the, of the uh, planet. And yet it uh, again protects the Earth from cosmic radiation. Within the ionosphere, we have what we call the radiation belts, or the Van Allen's belts. And these are belts where um, radiation is excessively concentrated in it. Mm -hmm. And these are the physical uh, protectors of the Earth from cosmic radiation. They're harmful, cosmic radiation? Oh, uh, very harmful. The radiation coming from? From the sun and from other stars as well. Okay. And the Earth is showered every second by billions of these cosmic rays. And uh, actually, cosmic rays, if they reach the surface of the planet, mm. or the surface of Earth, to destroy all life, and in no time, actually. So by the grace of Allah, we have these successive layers to protect the Earth from uh, cosmic radiation, from ultraviolet radiation. Uh, and uh, above the uh, ionosphere, we have what we call the magnetosphere. And the magnetosphere also expels or participates in expelling cosmic radiation. 
and minimizes the impact of um, of uh, met meteoric bodies, meteorites, oh, and falling and from outer space, co coming from outer oh. space. It slows uh, it down, or uh, no? It slows it down, and of course, by friction, it can oh. minimize its mass. You see. Yes. Okay. And uh, after the magnetosphere, we have the exosphere, mm -hmm. and exosphere also plays a very important role in minimizing the dangers of cosmic radiation, as well as. Uh, meteors Meteor. and meteorites. So we have layers of filters. Uh, they are spheres. Wow. They, are, they, are, they envelop the Earth completely. Right. The spheres, you see. Yeah. And of course, the magnetosphere allows the, the uh, cosmic uh, radiation to uh, come to the two poles of the Earth and revolve around it. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, reflect it back to it and do not enter into the lower atmosphere. Okay. And so really, these protective layers uh, scientists were wondering, were they, were they there from the very beginning of the creation of the Earth, or they were formed later on? And there was no answer. Nobody could answer this question. From this verse, I came to the conclusion that these protective layers were not there at the moment of the creation of the Earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them successively uh, later on. Why did I reach that conclusion? There is a phenomenon called aurora. Aurora, aurora borealis, aurora antarctica. Aurora is uh, a sort of light that comes at the middle of the night and as glowing as the real dawn. And nobody could explain the origin of this phenomenon until the space travel. You see, it was discovered in the early part of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. But it was not explained until the middle of the 1950s when, when space travel, travel to uh, the space. started. Yes. When space travel started, they came to realize that this phenomenon comes from the impact of cosmic radiation on the atmosphere. As cosmic radiations come, they are charged particles. So they react with any electricity in the uh, atmosphere and the glow the atmosphere this glow is seen only in polar regions it's not seen all over the globe only around the two poles around the northern and pole and around first? the southern pole why because all these protective layers are lenticular in a structure they thicken at the equator mm -hmm. and they thin out at the two poles and by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, there is no much life at the two poles. And that's why they do not need that protective layer. Due to the thinness of the protective layers of the atmosphere, the glowing of the impact of cosmic radiation with our atmosphere is seen only at the polar regions. And they are not seen in the rest of Otherwise. the globe as a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this I concluded that in the early days of the creation of the Earth, the night of the Earth was uh, glowing by the impact of cosmic radiation. And the day was glowing by uh, the uh, sun radiation. Uh, out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted day and night so that people can reckon time. People can have time to rest and time mm -hmm. to work. People can have time for, uh, for enjoying their lives at ease and times at, at hard work. And if we did not have the alternation of day and night, would it would have been impossible for us to reckon time or record events or know history. So um, Allah started creating these protective layers. Uh, of course, as I said earlier, by his instruction be and will be. Yes. But he made it in a gradual pattern so that we can understand this. But these layers, uh, I beg the, the layers, how were they determined? Uh, of course, they were studied you see, layer after layer. There are a special field of study of the atmosphere. Atmospheric conditions, of course, uh, climatic conditions are studied by uh, a certain group of scientists that uh, concentrate on the study of the atmosphere. For example, how did they know that, okay, this is the atmosphere, this is the ozonosphere, this is the ionosphere, of like course, that? Of course, because these have been studied very and carefully. Because of the, the, the makeup also, the structural makeup of these? Uh, uh, yes, they are the properties. Different. 
you see, you get a steady change in density of matter okay. as you proceed from sea level upwards. A steady change in uh, uh, chemical composition of the air itself. Uh, of course, uh, you get, as you go up, the concentration of oxygen goes down. Uh, you get more harmful gases like hydrogen and helium mm -hmm. um, and, and so on. So you can differentiate these layers, mm -hmm. uh, layer after layer, by its physical chemical characteristics, mm -hmm. as well as you can send uh, waves and study them. Uh, you can really send waves to these layers and uh, study them layer after layer. Yes. <laughs> and atmospheric science is a special science by itself. So I came to the conclusion that these layers were not created at the beginning of the creation of the Earth. Mm. So the night of the Earth was lit by the impact of cosmic radiation. And the day was lit by the impact of solar radiation. Out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these layers started to build up. Mm. And as they built up gradually, they obscured the sign of the night and left the sign of the day quite obvious. And that's why Allah is showing his bounties upon us in this verse. وَجْعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنَ Allah is saying, we have made the night and the day uh, as two distinctive signs. وَجْعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنَ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ Then we obscured the sign of the night. وَجْعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْصِرَةً And we made the sign of the day quite obvious, quite clear. Uh, لِتَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مَنْ رَبِّكُمْ so that you can seek the bounties of your Lord. So that also you can reckon the number of the years and you can count your time and, and precisely times for prayer, times for uh, giving uh, dues and rights to others, uh, time for pilgrimage, time for uh, travel, oh, time okay. for study. Uh, without the alternation of day and night, man could have never reckoned time, could have never recorded events, could have, have never known history. And this is a grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has obscured the sign of the night and left the sign of the day quite obvious for us. Dr. Zakarulu, I have a question, but we'll go for a short break. And then after the break, we'll continue. Okay, Thank you. Welcome back. Professor Zaglul, you said that cosmic radiations or cosmic rays are very harmful and they could destroy the Earth. Yes. And you also said that the protection layers were not always there. Yeah. So what protected the Earth before the protection layers were there from the cosmic radiations? A good question. You see, uh, we know that our Earth is uh, as old as uh, five billion years. Uh, it took the preparation of the earth to be suitable for living uh, almost, uh, I would say it, almost uh, 2,000 million years, uh, slightly less, but around that, that figure. And because the oldest record of life on earth goes back to 3.8 billion years, so 3.8 billion years, almost 1,000 to uh, 200 million years, or 12 uh, million, 1,200 million years, it took the Earth to be prepared to be suitable for living. Okay. So during this phase, the atmospheric <laughs> layers were created one after the other, and it was completely uh, uh, finished before the creation of the first form of life. So uh, in the early days, the Earth was impacted by cosmic radiation, okay. but there was no, no life to suffer. Oh. And probably these cosmic radiations did play a role 
and forming the and, and forming the, uh, the the earth. So they are only harmful for the forms of life, but not only for the earth as a no no a, as only a mass. harmful for living beings. Yes, yes. but so not for uh, yeah. rocks or uh, yes. soil or anything. So like the that. earth was basically prepared for the human being to to, uh, to serve the human being. Put it that way. Well, not only for human beings, mm. but for for uh, forms of life in general. Right. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I do believe that um, we are not the only inhabited planet mm -hmm. in this universe. Uh, but of course, we, uh, the conditions on Earth are suited mm -hmm. for this particular type of life. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, other planets may contain life different from what we know on Earth, but life that suits the atmospheric conditions, the, the uh, solid conditions of, of, of the planet itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, for every f planet, uh, there, there may be a certain uh, a type of, of life that suit the conditions on that planet. Mm. And I'm not bringing this from my own uh, thinking, but the Quran says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَثَّ فِيهِمَا مِنْ دَابَّةِ وَهُوَ عَلَى جَمْعِهِمْ إِذَا يَشَاءُ قَدِيرٌ And the translation goes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his many signs, uh, is the creation of heavens and earth, and what he has spread in them uh, out of trotters and trotters does not mean angels means creation uh, different from from us and when he would like to uh, collect them back he is capable of doing that so uh, Allah is saying that uh, he has a spread life in that universe um, so uh, but uh, sadly enough scientists try to assess life mm -hmm within the parameters of the earthly life. But it does not necessarily be that, mm. you see. So they brought some soil from the moon and they injected it into some living beings on earth and they said no reaction. So the, 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 there must be no, no life on the moon. I'm not saying that there is life on the moon, mm. but I'm saying that there could be certain uh, form of life that is different from ours. Mm -hmm. Our life is built from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Uh, the basis of uh, uh, life in other planets or other heavenly bodies must be different from life on Earth. But you were saying that the, the layers weren't always there. Is there proof, uh, any proof, like for example, cosmic rays hitting the Earth? Yes. They may, the cosmic rays must have changed something, some of the properties of Earth. Oh, definitely. Is there any proof from scientists that... Oh, uh, well, I, I don't have a proof myself, but uh, I'm sure if this point was studied carefully, it could be proved, uh, really, because the Earth was really sh uh, showered by cosmic radiation for at least uh, 1,200 million years until these protective layers were created. And once they were created in full and the Earth was protected from these excessive cosmic radiations, Allah started creating life by his instruction be, and it, it was. And life remained in the sea for uh, uh, almost uh, uh, 3,400 uh, million years in water. And there was no life on land at all because the oldest record of life on land uh, goes back to 400 million years. The oldest record of life in general on Earth goes back to 3.8 billion years. So uh, when Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ mm. It can reflect on that. We have created out of water every living being. So it reflects on the fact that life remained in water for 3.4 billion years before life was created on land. And this uh, again for a wisdom. Because uh, we see that uh, plant life preceded the creation of animal life because animals can rely on plants mm. for their food to serve the cycle of life the right. cycle of life yes mm. uh, plants can create can uh, process their own food uh, from the soil from the minerals the in the soil it does not need animals but animals need plants so plants w w were first created then animals plants play a role in uh, enriching the atmosphere with, with oxygen and land life needs oxygen especially animal life and human life. So the process was gradual, mm. uh, really. And I repeat again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of ordering things uh, be and it will be, yet he has created things in stages so that we as human beings mm. can perceive 
the process of creation, can understand the laws of creation, and can apply these laws for bettering life on the surface of that planet. Also, Doctor, this gradu graduity uh, also matches with the uh, verse in the Quran, إِنِّي جَعَلُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً that means that the earth was there before the human being. Yes. And, and, and it goes. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes. indeed. Mm. Yes, indeed. Allah. So <coughs> uh, this graduality is for a wisdom. Mm. Uh, because, say, for example, if all forms of life was created in one go, and Allah is capable of that, create everything in one go, be and it will be, we could never differentiate one rock layer from the other. Yes. Mm. Because we differentiate rock layers on the basis of their content of fossils, of the remains of life. So I can date rocks by the remains of life. I can follow uh, uh, earth wealth mm -hmm. like groundwater, oil, gas, phosphate deposits, coal deposits, uh, you see, or any other type of, of mineral wealth by means of dating the rocks. If I date the rocks properly, I can trace the wealth of the earth easily. And if all the rocks contain the same fossils, this process of differentiating one layer from the other would have been impossible yes. for us. Yes. So there is a wisdom behind the graduality mm. in creation. Mm. And we admit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of ordering things be and it will be. So yes. graduality in creation was because of our weakness, not uh, because of... Our own weakness, <laughs> yes. yes okay. Professor Zaghloul, uh, the fa uh, what you were saying that uh, the layers we're not always there. Is this, we can consider it as a fact or a theory? As? A fact or a theory? Uh, the, no, no, the graduality of uh, the, uh, the creation of these layers is my conclusion mm -hmm. from this verse. Yes. And nobody has reached that conclusion before. Okay. And I started from the Quran and I reached that conclusion. It needs a verification. Needs more We are working more on it now yes. uh, to assess uh, the uh, fact that these layers were created uh, in a process of graduality. Uh, they were not there in the very first moment of the creation of the earth. And as uh, Fuad uh, justifiably said, if we can study the rocks of the earth and see the impact of these cosmic radiations, which will be there, because nothing happens without leaving a record behind. Yes. You see, every single earthquake, every single volcanic eruption, every single mountain building movement is recorded in the rocks of the earth and can be easily read by geologists. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying that uh, I, I, for this verse, I start from the Quran and I reach that conclusion. And this conclusion needs uh, experimental verification mm -hmm. by uh, studying whether in all the rocks we had more impact of cosmic radiations or not to prove that these layers were there or not. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you start from the conclusions and sometimes you start from the Quran. And uh, uh, really, I use this to testify to people that uh, we as Muslims, uh, believing in the Holy Quran, being the word of the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in its divine purity, everything in it is correct. We could have started from the Quran and reached more basic scientific conclusions yes. before any other body else. Yes, subhanAllah. Yeah. With, with, with the creation, you obscuring the night and the layers, how do they come in? Obscuring the, the uh, I said that the, the uh, two signs of day and night is the light. Mm. The sign of the day is the radiation of the sun that is reflected on the molecules mm. of uh, condensed air in the lower atmosphere, on water vapor molecules in the lower atmosphere, on uh, small um, solid debris uh, in the lower atmosphere. And as they re are reflected several times, you see, they are uh, mixed together mm. to give this beautiful white uh, light of the day. Okay. The Quran distinguishes between um, reflected light and transmitted light. Mm. You see, mm. um, uh, he says he made the sun as a source of emitted light and made the moon as a source of reflected light. And uh, actually, in English, you cannot find this differentiation. Yes. Uh, all, all is all light, light, you see. Yeah, there all is, is light. only one Arabic word. Language, right? You see? Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, persistently, the Quran uh, separates and distinguishes between emitted light and reflected light. Emitted light from a source of energy that's emitting radio uh, magnetic waves 
electromagnetic waves Electro. that's emitting electromagnetic waves and the reflected light when these waves are, are uh, fall onto a solid dark body they are reflected as white light because as these uh, uh, electromagnetic waves are uh, radiating from the sun mm. uh, most of them are not uh, are invisible you can't see them mm. radio waves are not seen mm. um, uh, x-rays are not seen gamma rays are not seen um, uh, so uh, there is only a small belt of the electromagnetic wave that can be seen called visible light and this visible light is emitted from the sun at different wavelengths and these different wavelengths cannot be seen clearly as we see, see it in the daylight uh, because of the multiple reflection uh, on the, these particles, the gas molecules, the water vapor and the uh, solid particles, it, it gets mingled together to give you this beautiful white light of the day. And that's why you have an experiment where you can put the seven uh, colors of the uh, spectrum, uh, uh, spectrum uh, on a ring. And if you speed it quickly, it will give you white give light. White light. Subhanallah. Yes. Subhanallah. We are amazed at this. And we hope that we react in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to react. Inshallah. Inshallah. Sadly, you have come to the end of this episode. Till the next episode. Thank you, Professor Zaghlou. Thank you, Brother Fuad, Brother Mustafa. Thank you, dear viewers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.